Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the High Point Public Library. And this is our continuing series on home gardening via virtual. Uh, we hope you'll enjoy today's topic on raised bed gardening. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about raised beds because that's what we do up mostly out here in the teaching garden area. For those that have limited space, raised beds are one definite way you can get in your gardening wants and desires. If you don't like digging in the holes all the time and changing out the weeds, raised beds do offer some advantages. They actually have very few disadvantages, one of which is soil and raised beds dry out very quickly. You have to continuously water them, otherwise they're going to dry out and the plants won't like that. The other disadvantage is you can get three seasons out of raised beds if you properly prepare them. The problem is, again, when the sun goes down in late fall, raised beds tend to cool off quicker than if their vegetables are in the ground. Outside of that, there's a lot of things you can do with raised beds. Typically, a raised bed will be 10 inches high. If you look on the internet, it will say six to eight inches, but that doesn't allow for the soil to compress down and to cause other problems later on. So 10 inches is a better size to go with. These are all 20 inches, and there can be as high as 40 inches for those that have wheelchair needs or handicap accessibility needs. The other advantage to raised beds is you don't have to continuously weed. You do have to weed, though, because weeds like to grow in everything. With a raised bed, they can grow just about anything, such as eggplants and tomatoes back here, uh, have a cauliflower plant right here, as long as you give them enough space. So spacing is important to remember. When you're going to make a raised bed, you've got to decide. Do I have the size spacing that I need to have to have an 8x10 or 4x8 bed? Most of the beds here are 8 and 10 foot lengths. I have two others that are 12 foot lengths. They do tend to have some difficulties in reaching into the center, but that's all right. Rest of the time, you can do just about anything in a 4x8 bed. As, again, long as you remember, you have to have space for it. The other thing you have to remember is location. Raised beds are just like any other way of gardening. It has to have a lot more sun versus partial sun. Vegetables on the, mostly do not like partial sunlight, especially those that you grow in the summertime. Cucumbers, tomatoes, they love sunlight. You've got to have an open space area for that to happen. Also, when you're deciding where you're going to put a raised bed is the ground level. If the ground's not level, the bed's not going to be level. If the bed's not level, the wood in the framework is going to warp, and eventually you're going to have to replace those boards again. Now, there are controversies about building raised beds. The most is dealing with pressure-treated lumber. Originally pressure-treated lumber, up until 2004, contain one chemical that shouldn't be in anybody's diet, and that was arsenic. After 2004, arsenic was removed from pressure-treated lumber's chemicals mix-up. The one that is in there now that is still in debate is copper. Unfortunately, there is no exact answer to whether pressure-treated lumber is or is not harmful to vegetables or to humans. All we can say is we've used pressure-treated lumber here we take the extra precautions, which we suggest you do as well, which is to make sure that you do have well drainage out of your bed and that you don't plant your food right up against the sides of the walls of the bed. Long as you're a few inches away, the copper should not reach it, even if it does leach out of the wood. As I said, it's a controversy. The other thing is cost. For a lot of people, cost is a big thing when it comes to raised beds. You have to buy the lumber. You have to buy the nails or the wood screws. You have to get the soil. You have to get the soil amendments. 
that does cost a little bit of money. But there are ways to get around that. If you buy just regular lumber, it's about $3 cheaper per board than a pressure treated lumber. The disadvantage to that though is pressure treated lumber will last twice as long as regular lumber. So if you don't want to have to go through the expense of refilling, redoing, rebuilding every three to four or five years, pressure treated lumber is definitely the way to go. Now as I said, there's a lot of different ways to build raised beds. The traditional rectangular is one way. We're going to show you a couple of other ways if you follow me. Okay, so here we are with a couple of different examples of what a raised bed can look like. Right here is a 3x3 three three bed with the 2x8 boards as opposed to the 10 inch boards. This is great for just putting in flowers and herbs such as the catnip plant here. The catnip plant likes this small space. Also because I don't have to water it as often, it's actually a good mix because it likes drier conditions than some other flowers and plants do. And we're gonna walk around behind it here and show you something else. So here is our next idea of a bed. This is our longest bed in the whole teaching garden. What it's great for though, is to spread out things like tomato bushes or squash, zucchini, sweet potatoes, anything with long vines that love space and will take every bit of space this is a better way to grow them than just in a very small raised bed. If you're thinking about starting a raised bed, this is probably not what you want to start with. This is something you do after you've tried out a couple of years of gardening. If you like raised bed gardening and you have more space, then this is a great option to think about. But don't start with it because it's a lot more work. A lot more soil has to go into it, which is another factor in when it comes time for the following year, you've got to refertilize it. So that's another added cost to raised bed gardening that if you hadn't thought about originally, you're going to have to if you build something this big. Okay, so we're gonna end off today by talking about one of our newer raised beds. This is a three-tier bed. This is something that we've been wanting to try out. People with more constraints in size and area that they can actually do a raised bed garden might want to consider something similar to this. This is strictly a four by four bed base, then a three by three, then a two by two tier bed. It doesn't cost a lot. And the beauty of it is it takes up a lot less space than a regular eight by four raised bed does. The plants you have to kind of choose based on the conditions and the sunlight, what's gonna grow best in a raised bed that's raised up twice over a normal bed. In this case, we put in tomatoes and peppers, we put in a basil, Thai basil plant, we put flowers on the top, and inside on the top, which you can't see yet because they're not growing yet, is we put in parsnip seeds. And they should, if everything goes right, they should be very big by the time we pull them out of the ground because it's all soil down from the top level. I hope you've enjoyed our talk on raised beds today and please follow us with our next video presentation on summer vegetables. <laughs> <laughs>